So maybe a first question would be, give us a state of just your tribe. Madison has just been designated in December, Truax Field, as the home of F-35A. Doctor, can you start? Give us an overview. Martha Lanning became chair of the Wisconsin Democratic Party in 2015, and oh, the things she's seen since then. But right now, she's announced that she's not seeking another term as state chair. So, Martha Lanning, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Why are you not seeking re-election? Do you know, I really believe that the job of chair is uh, one, it's a very intense position. You need to be getting out all over the state and talking to members and Democrats all over the state. You need to be working with elected officials, finding great people to run for office. It's really like a relay. You grab that baton, you run your heart out, and when you cross that finish line, you've given it everything you've got. And I think to be the strongest party we want it to be, it's time for me to hand that baton so that people can build upon our great success from 2018 and take it to the next level. What's behind door B in your career for you? <laughs> What's next? Do you know there are several things that I'm looking at right now, but I'm really focused at this moment on being sure that when I do hand that baton, that we have an extremely well-funded um, uh, state party that, that gives that chair time to, to evaluate what they want to do next and, and to really take things. And for example, um, we have 11 people on the ground right now. When I came into office, we had seven people on staff. We now have 22. Half of them are out in the field. And those 11 people are building on six of them come from our field program from last year. So we have a year-round organizing program in Wisconsin that I'm very proud that our team has built. And I'm uh, working hard to be sure that that is fully funded so that when I hand it over, you know, it gives that chair some breathing room to, to evaluate what Are they're going to do next. Are you considering working for a presidential candidate, joining <laughs> the Evers administration, private business, running again for the state senate, which you one did, once did? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of options out there. I can tell you the one thing that I would say is that I am fully committed to being sure that I continue to help um, helping our neighbors, our next generations, have the quality and the opportunity of life that they deserve. And there's a lot of ways that I can do that, and I'm uh, going to evaluate the options to be sure that I'm using my best skills to further our democratic initiative. Okay, your party was a uh, key reason in why Governor Evers was elected, mm -hmm. but he came to the uh, governing job as a policy wonk. How is he transitioning to be the new leader of the, of the Democratic Party? I think that he is everything we need him to be. Um, he, when, when people come to meet Tony Evers, they see his genuineness. They see that he really cares about them as people. He is for the people. He's not a political, you know, slick person that's looking for uh, how he's going to further his political career. He works for them. And that's something that we heard across the state, that people really trust Tony Evers. They believe that he's going to make decisions that make their lives better. They know that he's going to have to make some hard decisions sometimes, but they trust that he's going to make the best decision for Wisconsinites. Is he too nice, given the fact that Republicans Republican legislators have pretty much said, thanks for the budget, but we're, we're going to draft our own. Is he, is, is he Tony too nice? I don't believe he is. I think that Tony pushes back in a very professional and appropriate way. I think that Tony is going to give our state the best opportunity to bring Democrats and Republicans together. Um, I will tell you that I think Representative Voss and uh, Senator Fitzgerald have clearly proven that they uh, they're not very good about trying to do that themselves, um, but I'm really proud of the fact that Tony isn't giving up and he's going to continue to say we need to all be working for the people and he's going to continue to try to make that happen. Does the Speaker Voss sound like a potential Republican candidate for governor and, and Tony to you? Uh, Challenging Tony to you? I definitely think that Speaker Voss seems to be more interested in his career and his career path and the people that can help him with this career than what the people of Wisconsin need. Because over and over again, he's made decisions that are not in the best interest of Wisconsinites. For example, stripping the governor and incoming Attorney General Josh Call of uh, the same uh, powers that his Republican um, uh, governor and Attorney General had. You know, those kinds of things are not the things that. Uh, respect the people's voices. And so, yes, I, I would believe that Speaker Voss is planning for his future. Um, a question on the, um, the election for governor. Uh, governor Evers got 36% of his vote from just two counties. 
Dane and Milwaukee. His margin in those two counties, 288,914 votes. You've heard the criticism. Is, your, is the party too tied to just Wisconsin's two largest counties? I a captive of those two large counties? Did you also know that if you took the 19 reddest counties in the state of Wisconsin and you added up the additional votes that Tony Evers got over Mary Burke's mm -hmm. performance in those same counties, it covers his win margin. He outperformed Burke. Yes, he did. Okay, and that so win margin was about 30,000 30, votes. Yes. So the issue for me is, is that when, we ca when I came into office, we were very, the party really looked to the top of the ticket. Whoever the top of the ticket is, they had to create the energy to create this field program. And that is not sustainable. We also needed to stop building you know, our field program and then shutting it down and then building it again. So one of my goals and a strength that I brought to the table is I am from building organizations and troubleshooting. We came in and said that we are going to activate our greatest resource, the people, all over the state of Wisconsin. And we created, starting in February 2017, a base organizing staff that got information to people all over the state. We had over 200 teams around the state of Wisconsin organizing and getting people out to vote. Did you notice the Marquette poll that showed that the greatest increase and Democratic performance came from three red counties. Ozaki. Oh, wow. Yes. So the issue here is we had, in 2014, we had 28 assembly seats where a Democratic candidate didn't run. In 2018, there were only eight. So that's a lot more Democrats out there talking about what Democratic leadership does and how it will improve their neighbors' lives. And it made a difference. And I believe that all the hard work of our assembly and our Senate you know, talking to their neighbors and those grassroots organizers is what helped Tony get over the, the finish line first. You elected Governor Evers, you re-elected Senator Baldwin, but you only gained one seat in the assembly and you lost one in the state senate. What's it going to take for your party to win one or both houses of the ledge? Well, let's be perfectly clear. The Republicans have rigged the system. They cheated. They drew the lines to empower themselves. There's a great graphic out there that I have and I'm sharing with our party that shows Tammy Baldwin had a decisive win, no doubt about it, a strong win. If you look at the congressional districts, she only won three out of the eight congressional districts. If you took us back to the 2009 um, maps that we had, she won five. Isn't that convenient that the Republican Party has designed our lines to benefit themselves. That is the exact same thing with our assembly. 54% of the votes that were placed for assembly candidates were for Democrats, and yet we only got 36% of the seats. Our team did a great job. We had phenomenal candidates that should be assembly reps and senators right now. The Republicans cheated, and we're going to keep pushing forward with our message and keep building up our base to get that message out. And hopefully in 2020, even with these current um, uh, maps, if they aren't changed, we will be able to start to win more of those votes back. But by 2022, for sure, Tony Evers will veto maps that are not fair. Okay. Um, why did it take four elections for your party to defeat, to defeat Scott Walker? Excuse me. I think, again, I think it comes back to that we had, we had good candidates and they were doing their part, but our party didn't have the field program to really support uh, getting the message out. You know, that we needed to be sure that we have neighbors talking to neighbors, that people are explaining why is this candidate so important to our life here. You know, after the 2016 election, I went around the state and I asked people, what was the message of Hillary Clinton? And people could not tell me what she was going to do to make their lives better. They could tell me that she didn't like Trump and they could tell me stronger together, but they couldn't tell me that she was going to invest the most money in FDR in infrastructure since FDR would have created 60,000 jobs here in Wisconsin. So what were we doing wrong? We were spending too much time talking about our opponent and not enough time talking about what democratic leadership offers people here in our state. And that really changed this year. Given, the narrow, given the narrow margin, the victory by President Trump in 2016, would Miss Clinton have won had she returned back to Wisconsin in the final 10 days before the election? There are so many factors that could have affected that race. Did and you I ask her to come back? 
well, we all wanted uh, Hillary Clinton to come to come to Wisconsin. I think there's there are a lot of things though that you have to look at when you look at that picture. First thing is the Republican Party was telling Trump he was wasting his time in Wisconsin, and he was going against the norm and coming here and you know all over the news about his visits here, which helped him, right? And Hillary Clinton, everyone was telling Hillary Clinton that she had Wisconsin. The, the lesson to it all is don't take anything for granted. We must be sure that we talk to all voters. We must be sure that we ask them for their vote and that we inspire them to vote for us because we tell them what we're going to do to make their lives better. The lesson of 2016 is you got to work for the people. And we didn't do a good job of getting that message out in 16, but we sure did in 2018. The one high point of your chairmanship, the election of, of Governor Evers? Absolutely. Being at, at his victory party and seeing so many people that had put blood, sweat and tears into being sure that we can turn things around to look at, you know, teachers who know that that kids in our communities, that their opportunities are being eliminated because we weren't properly funding our schools to look at people who are concerned about retirees who have worked hard their whole life but now can't afford their pharmaceuticals or are at a threat of losing their, their, their health care coverage, which could, could cause bankruptcy, to know that people, because Governor Walker you know, reduced the protections on water quality, there are homes in Kewanee County that cannot drink the water coming out of their tap because it's not healthy for them. Seeing those people all together, there were tears of joy, and it was definitely the highlight of my four years. Okay, that's your highlight. Low light, yeah, failure to defeat Governor Walker in the recall, failure to defeat him in 2014, lowest point of your chairmanship? 2016. I was not, the first race I've had with Governor Walker is 2018 because I came in in 15. That's true, thank but you. But in 2016, the low point of my career uh, was when I was at Russ Feingold's party and my team came over to me and said, we need to go. Russ has lost and Hillary may be losing the state. Let's look nationally. Democratic Party seems to be at a crossroads. And it's almost a generational debate in terms of its future. You have a debate between your young progressives, very aggressive, and your more moderate traditionalists. Uh, and I'm talking here about the continuum between um, Alexandria, I'm going to use the initials, AOC, <laughs> and former Vice President Biden. Where should the party go in terms of that continuum? I think the party is not a person. The party is a platform. It is that we believe in the opportunity um, of our kids to have a good quality education no matter what zip code they live in and to have success. We believe in responsibility to be sure that retirees can get, uh, can retire with dignity, that people that need health care coverage can get it, that people are paired a fair wage, that we don't just support those at the top. We are a, a the Democratic Party stands for a platform and all of these people are stepping up to say that I have ideas on how we can further that platform and the choice is the people. You know, I as the chair am never going to tell you which one of those people better represents uh, our platform because that's the choice that the voters are going to make in that primary. And what I do know is that every single one of them would do a far better job than Donald Trump who has taken us down a path that is shocking, you know, lifelong Republicans. So it's time for a change, and I'm really thrilled to see so many people stepping up. Well, I want to elaborate on that. Um, you're a member of the Democratic National Committee. What has President Trump done both for Democrats nationally and Wisconsin Democrats? Chair? What has he done? Uh, wow, what has he done? Um, Activated, motivated them to a degree you haven't seen, or Will that energy not be as present in 2020? No, he, def he definitely has activated people who may not have had the opportunity or the time to, to pay as close attention, okay? There, right now, there are so many people, highest poverty level in Wisconsin in how many years? There's so many people that struggle paycheck to paycheck just to live and to get along. And were they spending as much time paying attention to politics? Do they understand? Do they have the time to really dig in? I think Donald Trump has moved that priority of I need to pay attention to this higher on everyone's list. That this is scary. That we have a man that is talking to the Russian government. We have a man that is that is complimenting killers. We have a, And he is in, in the White House. You know, 
we have a man that is consistently lying. Um, and that is not who we are. We're better than that. We are Wisconsinites and, and we respect honesty and transparency and that's not what this is. So yes, does Donald Trump um, motivate our party to get out and do more? Certainly. Uh, but I, what I would say is that I look forward to the day when we can uh, be motivated to work together to find solutions to the problems that our, our country has and that we're not frightened by who is in the White House. Should the House Judiciary Committee dr begin drafting articles of impeachment for, Mr. for President Trump? You know, I leave that up to the House. Uh, those are very difficult decisions. And the one thing that I would say to people is, is that when I look back here in Wisconsin, and I really think Wisconsin, people can learn a lot by what happened in Wisconsin, that the extreme change that happened here and what was the result. I don't think that the root recall was a good thing. I think it really entrenched people behind Scott Walker. I think that if we had 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 waited to the next election and we had expressed that the cuts to education, how they had negatively affected opportunity, how, you know, passing over badger care expansion had taken away health care from so many people. I think that people wouldn't have been um, as as resistant to change. And I think sometimes uh, when you change, you know, when you do a recall or those kinds of things, you can actually entrench people behind these people and, and cause people to stop listening. That's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really think this w is something we need to leave to the House. They have all the facts and they need to make the best decision. Twelve Democrats have so far announced that they're running for president. Twelve others are considering it. Is that a, a good thing that up to more than 20 may run for president? Or are you afraid that the party splits, someone like Starbucks executive Mr. Schultz gets in and Mr. Trump is reelected? Is that a reason, is that a scenario that concerns you? I will never ever say it's a good idea for us to have uh, another party running. Um, it is, I, I think that it always puts us at risk uh, when that's happened and there's facts to prove it um, from past presidential elections. But having a lot of people run, you know, people were telling me that when we had the gubernatorial race. And what, what I said to people is the, the fact that we have so many people running for governor that know that they can do a better job than Scott Walker, that means we have that many more voices out in Wisconsin talking to to Democrats about the change that they need to see. And that amplifies um, the message that we want out there to talk about what democratic leadership happens. And I believe that we have that same opportunity with this um, wide group of primary voters. The 12 who have announced mm -hmm. range in age from Representative Tulsi Gabbard, who's 37, to Bernie Sanders, who is 77. 40 year gap. Is this, is this a generational debate in your party nationally? I, I, I think, again, that their main focus here is that we have a large group of people that believe that they can do a better job than Donald Trump, and they have ideas on how to do that. And sure, there can be differences in generations about what path we take to do that, but the bottom line is, is that they're all standing up for the platforms, the beliefs that we as the Democratic Party hold on opportunity and fairness and transparency and responsibility to the people. And um, when we present, when they present their plan, it will be the people that will decide who best represents the Democratic Party and we'll all get behind that nominee. So you welcome this potential 20 person as long as we are talking about the issues, I mean, when you look back at the 2018 prim primary um, for the Democrats, it was a very positive primary. I mean, we, uh, when I go back and talk to the candidates, they're friends. These are people that really respected each other and they treated each other with that respect. That's what I think is really important is that this isn't about political careers. This is about who can help make Americans' lives better. And we need to really focus on that and talk about the issues and may the best person win. Okay, I want to ask you about two particular candidates. Okay. Senator Sanders won the 2016 Wisconsin primary. Does, has, has his core of popularity held uh, in terms of in Wisconsin now? Could he potentially win our next, ne next year's primary? Well, I think that's something that we're going to have to watch play out. You know, I definitely can tell you that uh, Bernie Sanders is beloved in Wisconsin. I you think still that find that excitement as you travel the state? I, I still think there are people that respect him. I, I, if you're asking me, are every one of those people committed to him? I think, you, you know, you need to go out and talk to some of those people. I think there are a lot of women right now that are excited about seeing some women running in this. And so right. it may... 
it, it you know each race is different they they they're they're choosing um, based upon what they see and I think you know you can't really compare what happened in 2016 to what's happening now because it's a it's a totally different group of candidates then my other question about one specific candidate do you hope former vice president Biden runs you know I think uh, uh, Vice President Biden is uh, an amazing man, and I think uh, there are many days that I wake up and long for the days when President Barack Obama and you know Vice President uh, Biden were in the White House. Um, so I think he's a he's a very well respected man in our party. I think that's a decision that he has to make, but I know that there are people that are strongly supportive of him, just like there are in many of the other candidates. Well, you just said that you welcome the number of women that are running for president. Mm -hmm. Which of them, Kamala Harris, Kristen Gillibrand, Amy Klobuchar, et cetera, might have the strongest platform? You're trying to get me into trouble here. So as the it's chair, my job. I know, I know, and you're so good about asking. <laughs> he I asks it so nicely. <laughs> would have the strongest platform. I'm not asking you to endorse. They that are all the incredible question. women who uh, are right. talking about. Um, you know, I think that women, the assault by President Obama or President Trump on women, has been direct. Um, uh, you know, I really feel for his wife. I, uh, I feel for the women that have been around him and that have been um, inappropriately treated. Mm -hmm. And I think that all women uh, uh, want to be sure that we protect our family and our communities and we d we're the nurturing type. And it, so it does not surprise me at all that there are many women stepping up and many strong women. I mean, we have some amazing women that are coming forward that have proven that they have the ability to win statewide races and they can certainly take that to the streets. No doubt in your nation. mind that we could elect a woman president in the oh. next cycle. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't. I. I believe that women's voices are getting louder and louder, and as they should, um, because what we are seeing happening right now is is tragic, and we need to bring it back to who we are, and we're better than what uh, is happening in the White House, and that's why it just makes me proud to be hearing uh, women stepping up and talking about what we can do to really make everyone's lives better, and not just Democrats' lives better everyone's lives better, which is another thing that I think is very different. Um, Donald Trump is very divisive and div divides and is only speaking to his supporters. And I'm really proud of the fact that the people in our party are speaking to all the people, whether they're voting for them or not, that their goal is to make their lives better. I said I was going to ask you about two individuals, but I'm going to violate that. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth Warren, can she make uh, us, can she, can she be one of the finalists, do you think? I, I think that just like the other women that you mentioned, that she's an amazing women, woman who has uh, proven that you know she has what it takes to win state ride races. She has a very strong following, like the other women that you mentioned. Um, and I think this is really going to be up to putting together the right team to get your message out there and to talk to the voters. And the voters will decide who our nominee is. Um, and I know that all of those people will get behind that nominee because we all want to just be sure that the next president of the United States is a Democrat that is standing up for opportunity and fairness and transparency. Look forward to the next Wisconsin primary. Let's say there's um, still 12 or 14 candidates. Will, do you think uh, the, uh, the next Wisconsin primary for the Democratic nomination will matter? I do. Well, why? Because we're kind of late in the cycle. We are, but well, we were. We mattered. Moving. We mattered when we had, you know, two people left in the race. You know, so I think the more people that you have in a race, you know, it 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 can it can make the difference. It's really, you know, it's hard. You, the pundits can come in and they can tell you what what's going to happen, but we're all looking in a crystal ball here, and we know that that's not a science, and so it's all a prediction. What I do think when I say about what really matters is Wisconsin matters. We know that it matters because we were one of the states that that did not go in the blue direction. And um, so we will matter up until Election Day, and we will run hard no matter what anybody tells us about what Wisconsin's going blue or not. We're going to run hard all the way through the finish line and be sure that we el help elect the next Democratic president of the United States. How has the influence of social media evolved in your four years as chair? 
Wow. Uh, Bad thing, good thing? Do you know, it's both. I mean, it's a, such a great thing because, you know, you can go into areas of Wisconsin that their news is coming from Minneapolis. It's not coming from Wisconsin. And the cost of getting on, you know, the Minneapolis market is very, very expensive. And so there's a section of Wisconsin that gets little to no um, ads that have to do with Wisconsin. Um, and, and so how do we get a message to those people? How do we get that? Well, digital media, it, it, it empowers that. It allows us to do that. So in that way, it's a great thing um, in allowing, helping us send out messaging and being sure that people are informed. But as good as that is, it's also dangerous. We all know that the Russian government did infiltrate the digital media. We know that they were giving out false information. We know that people attached to Donald Trump's campaign literally lied and put out lies on digital media to try to influence this election, and they did. Um, so it is both good in that if it is wisely used by people with ethics, it can be a great tool, but it is also dangerous because it is not well regulated and with people um, that do not have strong ethics and are just after uh, their immediate goal and are fine with cheating and giving out false information, it's a very dangerous thing and something that we all have to monitor. Elected Democrats in Washington are kind of divided over the term Medicare for all. What's your reaction to that? Do, uh, w would that be a good policy change to go after for the nation? What I see Democrats not divided about is that they believe that every single American should have access to affordable quality health care. There is no division there. I think, um, and that's what I really focus on. Sometimes in the party, we get caught up on certain words and you, we have to take a step back and say, w what is the goal here? The goal is to be sure that every American who works hard and plays by the rules can get quality health care. That somebody who has a, 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 is a person with a disability, that they are not immediately removed and go bankrupt because they had this unfortunate situation or that they had a medical condition like cancer. That their Democrats are universally united that all Americans should have access to affordable health care. And I think it's important that we focus on that and that how we get there is a debate that our legislators need to sit down and talk about the best way to achieve that. Now, the State Democratic Convention, which will be mark the end of your tenure, yes. June 1 and 2 in Milwaukee, Yes. Um, how many presidential candidates do you anticipate? Are we going to be very popular? Uh, is our neighbor, Senator Klobuchar, going to be here? Do you know? Come, well, <laughs> give us some news here. You won't endorse. So, so, so the, challenge, work with. the challenge of any kind of a campaign is that you ask and they say, we're, we're looking at it. So, you know, we have to wait and see um, how that all plays out. So I, uh, we have no announcements to make as of right now. But what I can tell you about that, uh, that convention is it's going to be a really exciting convention for Democrats because we literally, for the first time since 1982, a party in the state of Wisconsin, not just the Democratic Party, but a party won every single statewide race. And those people are going to come to that convention. And for a first, it's like a shot of scope in a dry mouth. For a very long time, we have loved seeing to Tammy Baldwin get up on that stage and Gwen Moore and Mark Pocan and Ron Kind. But we now are going to add to it the governor, you know, Tony Evers and Mandela Barnes and Josh Call and Sarah Godlewski. I mean, and Doug, I mean, this is Doug LaFollette. It is just, it is going to be a remarkable weekend because it is a time for our leaders to shine and for Democrats to celebrate. But I'm reminded how. Speaker Voss and Senate Majority Leader Fitzgerald re re responded to the governor's budget, saying it was drafted for delegates to the next Democratic Party convention. It, it, that, that was just their aside. Do you know the insults that may come from uh, Robin Voss and Scott Fitzgerald? The reason they're saying that is because they can't come back against what that budget will do for people. You know, they've got to throw insults like that because we all know that if we were ensuring that more people get health care and that we were taking millions, $300 million that the federal government would send us and say, here, Wisconsin, you can have this and you can give all these people health care, that how can they object to that? Before now, they've been sending that money to other states. They've been taking our federal tax dollars and saying, no, we don't want it. Send it somewhere else. 
all Wisconsinites, if they really understood what Robin Voss and Scott Fitzgerald were doing, would say that's ridiculous. And so because they can't speak to the actual issues, they throw you know insults like that, and that's ridiculous. The next chair will be elected at the convention. Yes. How, how many candidates are there right now? Uh, there's one announced candidate. Okay, you expect others? It, well, there could be others. There are okay. others that are looking at it, absolutely. And then my final question, what's your advice to the next chair of the Wisconsin Democratic Party? I, my advice is, is that you need to get out there and you need to travel all over the state and you need to talk to people and you need to get representatives on all geographic areas and different constituencies in from the grassroots all the way up to the top leadership. You need to talk to everyone and when you make decisions, be sure that you've touched base with all those people so that you have all the information to make the best decision for Wisconsin. Um, because this is this is a difficult job sometimes. There, there are times where you know we have competing interests and it's important that you talk to everyone and they get everyone's input before you make those decisions. Martha Lanning, congratulations on your tenure as chair. <laughs> Good <laughs> luck you. on what's behind door B. Thank you. Are you sure you don't want to tell us which presidential candidate you want to endorse? <laughs> you are consistent and uh, persistent. Yeah, but I keep getting the same <laughs> answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good it was luck. a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much.